Hey, what's up everybody? Friday, April 17th. Nice big rally to finish the week. Dow up 700 points. Let me fill you in on some breaking news. The deficit is now 1.1 trillion. Remember, you heard it here first. I am telling you this now. In about a week or 10 days, you'll be reading about it in the news. Everybody's going to be going crazy. Oh my God, the deficit is over a trillion. This is a good thing. This is a good thing. Remember, the deficit equates to the surplus to the non-government. So 1.1 trillion deficit by definition means that it was an addition to the income and financial savings of the non-government in the amount of 1.1 trillion. So we need the deficit to go up right now. That is financial support to the economy. And I've been going over the fiscal with you uh, spending is up 460 billion over last year. The deficit is 545 billion larger than where it was at this time last year. So these are all good, positive things. It needs to happen. And uh, I'll just mention again when the news media gets a hold of this and maybe with some economists and, and, and policy makers get a hold of this, they're gonna be screaming bloody murder, but that's their ignorance, okay? We, myself, my subscribers, we are making money on their ignorance. Now, speaking of ignorance, I have noticed, first of all, let me say, there is still a lot of bearish sentiment. If you look at um, what I would call barometers for market sentiment, such as the put call ratio, the weekly uh, associate, American Association of Individual Investors, they publish a survey that comes out uh, every Wednesday. If you look at these barometers of sentiment, they still have very low levels of bullishness, very high levels of bearishness, and that tells me the market is going higher. Now, of course, there's other things that I look at. The fiscal is a big part of my analysis, as you know, uh, that's all MMT. And I've been telling you about this and I've been correct. I mean, what are we now? Two weeks, two and a half weeks uh, when I called the bottom and now, you know, we're seeing a very nice rally, a lot of skepticism surrounding this rally. We still have not seen a shift into a more bullish outlook. So this tells me that the market is still going to go up. You have a lot of fiscal support right now. You have a lot of negativity. You have a lot of bearish sentiment. So this tells me that the market is going to go up, which it has been. Um, so I mean, the environment right now, at least the market environment, and again, I, let, me, let me distinguish between the two things because I'm getting a lot of blowback on this, and that's understandable. I can understand, like some of you, uh, maybe you're getting, you're getting angry, you're getting, you're getting pissed off because I'm saying, hey, look at the market, it's going up, it's bullish, and you're saying, Mike, you know, people are getting sick, people are dying, they're not going to be able to fully open the economy up. Uh, it, it may be one of these rolling shutdown scenarios where they open it up for a while and then they're going to have to shut it down again and you, you know you can't control this virus and it's going to take a look. I get all that. I get all that. So I will reiterate that you know why do I why do I do these videos? I do these videos for two reasons. Number one to try to educate people on, uh, with respect to MMT and, and an understanding of how our monetary system functions. And number two, uh, you know, to give an outlook, a market outlook, if, for those of you who are traders or investors or if you are running a business and you need to have an economic outlook, a big picture, I do, I do the videos to try to um, inform you and to provide information. So let's, let's separate the two things. What I talked about a couple of weeks ago was 
you know, you have to, the markets are, for the most part, not always, but for the most part, they are discounting mechanisms. What do I mean by that? I explained it uh, in the past. What I mean by that is they reflect investor expectations. They reflect forecasts, maybe forecasts from Wall Street, from financial institutions, from economists. And so what we have seen in this crash, by many measures, this stock market crash was worse than the crash we saw in 1929 through 1933. And it basically happened in a, you know, in a month. We got in a month what it took four years in the time period I just mentioned, back in the 19, 1929 to 1933. Then some new variables. So the stock market, if you want to use the word, discounted a massive hit to the economy all right that's why it collapsed so far then some new variables entered the equation we had uh the stimulus right the 2.2 trillion we had a lot of fed monetary uh policy actions that were taken uh, and actually some of those things were dangerous to the market. I mean, this massive dumping of trillions of reserves into the banking system, you see the consequence of that now, like the SBA loans, the PPP loans, the payroll protection program loans. The banks are all tapped out now. They can't make their loans, and it's not their fault. They are under regulatory constraints. I have been over this. I mean, when you add so many non-risk assets like the Fed did with those reserves. The banks are constrained. They can, they can make loans up to the point of the amount of capital that they have. And when you dump all those assets in there, they need more capital in order to make more loans, which has not been forthcoming. So we've had a lot of new variables that have entered the equation after the market crashed. And all I was saying was that the market, at least for me, my perception was it had discounted a major, major contraction in the economy. Now what are we seeing? We are seeing weekly uh, unemployment claims starting to come down. They peaked at March 28th. We are starting to see a reopening of certain uh, parts of the country's economy. All right. The checks were sent out. I talked about that uh, yesterday. You had 150 billion sent out on uh, Tuesday. So some new developments have entered the picture. There's still a lot of bearish sentiment towards the market. So I'm not trying to uh, ignore the very serious aspect of the virus and maybe the long-term struggle we're going to have with that, if I could use that word. But I'm trying to distinguish, I'm trying to separate as an investor, I'm looking at the markets, I also understand what's happening with you know, health concerns and the virus and society. We will see you know, in a couple of weeks, maybe a couple of months, what conditions are going to look like. I mean, at that point, there may be, again, new variables entering the situation which suggest, hey, you know what? The fiscal has run its course. They've not added to that. The virus is still at very high uh, transmission levels. It's still spreading. Uh, there has been no meaningful resumption in business activity. You know, we will be able to make an assessment at some point later on. But right now, conditions suggest that the market is going to improve from here. It's going to improve from here. And when I say that, that is not in any way trying to ignore what is happening with COVID-19. Anyway, a great day. Um, the deficit is at 1.1 trillion. You're going to hear about that in a week. Remember, you heard it from me first. I have all this information first before anybody else. Have a great weekend, everybody. Stay well. I'll see you on Monday. Bye-bye.